and here we yep. go what's up everybody back with another kind of special edition we're not really sure what we're doing with these thursday shore formats uh we've been doing critique for i don't know what we did like 13 episodes of critique i think and then we got into this client first release and we started doing kind of some workshop stuff after clone comp we also did some like hangout sessions and so um actually we're going to share a little poll here with the audience to um let you all tell us what you think we should do moving forward with um this thursday show format so today we're going to dive into deep into client first joe's going to walk us through some of the builds our shit is on the team that helped kind of put this together. So he's gonna give us some help and context here. Rohan is our, you know, Mr. Fix It. He's like the glue holding all the things here together at FinSuite. And so like, he's gonna give his thoughts on this whole process and we'll answer all your questions. So we're gonna go over different questions that you've asked since we released the product. Um, some common like things that people are running into, uh, how to fix certain things and just how to work really efficiently with this client first system. So um, yeah, Joe, what did I miss? Um, what else do we need to fill the folks in up on? This episode is about some of the most common questions and comments that we got since we released Client First. There's some people asking about spacing. There's some people that don't understand CSS specificity. And that's what we are focusing on for this episode, that we've created a, a demo for you to help you better understand how to utilize the spacing in client first and how CSS specificity influences any project, no matter what system you're using. So this is a big, big learning opportunity throughout this session. Yeah. And, um, as usual, hang on, I'm kind of scrolling through all the different folks that have commented here. Um, so yeah, I want to say a quick shout out to everyone who's hanging with us like we always do. Babis is here. Carly, what's up? Corey, uh, Felicity, Jeremy, obviously Joe, myself, Rohan, we're all here. Uh, Maria, what's up, Maria? Nimesh, Pablo Cortez, Penny, Rohan. Uh, Rohan, your name appeared on the list again, okay? <laughs> Steven, Supercharged Studio, <laughs> Slawek, and uh, Malison are the folks who have participated in the chat so far. So what's up? Leave your thoughts in the chat here. Um, I wonder why it won't let me send this poll. Um, yeah, Harshit, tell me a little bit about your thoughts as we've seen this going through. Uh, Client First is launched. It's live. It's out in the open. What are your thoughts as somebody who's kind of helped pull this together before Joe um, starts sharing his screen and we dive into, like, the nitty-gritty of this stuff? Yeah, Rima, sure. So uh, I have been working on the system for a long time now, and I have did a lot of client projects with this. Okay. And I feel this is a really powerful system. It just takes you some time to understand the basics. It's not hard at all. Right. And it will just take a little bit of time to understand the powerful part of the system, like the spacing system. It, it might be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but it's not hard at all. It's really easy to understand. And once you are familiar with the whole system, uh, it's really easy to maintain a consistency. We have so less amount of classes here. Uh, it's really easy to maintain all the system. I will just give you an example here. So we have spacing classes, right? This, that is the most powerful part of our client system, a client first system. So uh, whenever we have, let's say hundreds of classes, and we work on a client project where our classes are based on our design. Okay. So let's say I am having padding top large. I want to change that based on my project. If I am having a normal system uh, or maybe the better version of client first where we will having, we were having all of the different classes for spacing, I will have to go and edit each of them to make it work for my design. But now, because we are using one class for size and then other classes for the multiple times. We can just edit one of the class and it will be uh, automatically done for the rest of them. So nice. there are a lot of pinpoints in client first that are really powerful. And I'm really excited to answer all of the questions that community was asking. And let's see how it goes. Nice. Rohan, any thoughts there before we uh, turn the tables over to Joe so he can kind of walk us through some of the, the stuff he's got prepared? Sure, yeah. My favorite bit about Client First is I've been just like copy pasting stuff, building stuff. And I know that there is a common terminology between all the designers, all the projects. So I know what people on our team have built 
and what those keywords actually mean. So having that common language, which is established, which is the industry standard by a top flow agency for me is like, wow, why did I not have this when I started learning that flow? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and we've seen some cool suggestions from uh, folks in the community too. Um, we see just people saying, and this is for the extension too, right? Like, but how they'd like to see these client resources presented, and you know, things they'd like to see as add on to this. So it's it's also kind of fun to be on the forefront of helping establish that. Uh, to your point, Rohan, I think it would have been cool to have these tools and resources available for us, but then we wouldn't have the opportunity to build them and kind of like, you know, give that to the community. And so uh, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, interesting, interesting, um, I don't know, dilemma there. But uh, Joe, what are your thoughts here as we're jumping into this? What are we gonna share first? Well, this episode is all about education. You can use client first without the knowledge that we're about to give you in this episode. You can use it as a much more surface level user, like a client. You pass this off to a client, they don't have to know the deep, deep parts of client first. That's It's designed like that. However, when you do understand these deep, deep parts, you can start making much more intelligent decisions inside your project, decisions that work better for you as a developer, decisions that work better for your team and for your clients. That's what this is all about. and. It wasn't really obvious to us that there would be so much education that comes with client first. I didn't think that we would be reviewing this so soon after launch. I thought this would be a longer, longer term topic, but people are asking about it. People are curious about it. And that's exactly why, why we're doing this. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start walking through this example. This is going to be available in the resource section. We're going to give a full overview of this now, but we're going to package this up. We're going to film a proper video. We're going to release this maybe even as a clonable so you can go and play around with this and make sure that you understand it. So this is called Make Intelligent Spacing Decisions Inside Your Project with Client First. We're going to go through all of this content inside Designer, and I'm going to show you different decisions that can or cannot be made inside client first to be a lot smarter with how you approach spacing. There's no right answer. There's usually not official right answers when you're building a website. It's strategies and it's building for the site that you're developing, building for the clients you're, you're working for. So let's get into it and let's see what this is all about. Okay. In Client First, we have global spacing classes, and we call these spacing wrappers. You can nest things inside of these spacing wrappers to help you space elements from each other. So maybe I'm sp um, separating text from other text, or a button from text, or a, a item, a CMS item from another CMS item, and I can use global classes to do that. This helps me move faster. This helps the build go quicker and create less custom classes. We can also apply spacing to custom classes to help you better manage that element. So it's really important to understand that just because we have global spacing in here doesn't mean that global spacing has to be used on every single element. It probably shouldn't be used on every single element. And we're actually going to go through specific examples of Look at the global spacing working really well here. Look at the global spacing not working well here. And now this is an opportunity to use the spacing on the custom class. So let's get into it. We're, we have a whole bunch of examples and hopefully by the end of this scroll through, you will have a really good understanding of how you can approach the spacing. Okay, yes. I was gonna say, hey Joe, can you, as you go through this, one of the things that people were really, um, talking about wanting to see and explore inside of this is kind of how you build it and and how it's structured. Can we, before we dive too deep, maybe just start out with the, like the clonable or like where would the person start before we kind of get into here? Um, or maybe this is a good place to do that, but just think of this as a framework. Like imagine I'm coming at this from a clean, slate maybe i've you know uh cloned the the resource that we've given and i'm starting from that point 
where where's the best place as I want to step into this, not just kind of dissecting what's built here, but like, can we maybe take it even one step uh, past this? Can we like open up a new page and, and just just show them how the structure is nested and so they can see that. And maybe that's what you're going to do here. But I just um, wanted to maybe make sure we start uh, right at the beginning. Yeah, I, I actually don't want to do that. Uh, that's there's documentation on that. We can walk through that at a different time, but I really do want to focus on spacing here that that's a whole other conversation. We can have a whole, a whole episode about how to nest. We'll be talking about that for way too long. So I'm going to jump into the spacing here. Uh, and please, if you're brand new to client first, this is not a beginner's video. This is well, it is a beginner's video, but this is not something that your first client first video should be on. This is after you've looked at the docs. This is after you've you see how the system works. Maybe you've read some stuff, you've you've cloned a few projects, and now you're ready to go deeper into spacing. You're ready to understand how this works. I do want to. Um, I just want to fight back a little bit because we're getting a ton of comments of people saying, and now we're getting thank you, Joe. Yeah, we're, we're just getting a bunch of people asking, can you start with the blank page? It'd be nice. That's exactly what we want to ask. Um, it may not. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe we do it after after we do what you were um, going to show here. Can we maybe go back and at the end of the show, maybe we can spend some time on like a blank page um, and just walk through some of that. Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Why don't we do that towards the end? We'll do we'll get hands on with it in that context. Um, Great. Yeah. OK. OK, so should I move forward yeah, with the spacing? Go back to this. Yeah, let's go. Let's just go to the. Yeah, let's go through what you had planned and we can walk through what we'll do is once Joe gets through some of this, we'll do I'll pop up a, a open one on my end and maybe Joe and Harshit and Rohan can kind of help watch me stumble through and they can talk me through building and we'll go through like a, a real simple, um, you know, just a couple section build adding to, to the container. We don't have to build elements. I just kind of want to show the nesting structure for how how do you wrap that global padding? You know, like, how do you have to nest your elements to get to the place where it's effective to style that and that that you can, you know, not just use it, but I want to understand how to build it kind of from the from the ground up. OK, uh, all right, let's move forward with spacing here. I'm going to share my screen again. So, again, this is this is for people that want to understand how the spacing works. If you are brand new to the system, Please go to the docs first. OK, uh, first, we're going to show a global and custom custom class example here. This paragraph right here is nested inside of a global margin top class. We have our margin top. We have our margin small. There is no reason to create a custom class here. A lot of times when we're dealing with text, we're separating it from other text. And if we have all of our text global and we have our text really neat and organized on the tag on our text classes, we're not going to want to create a lot of different custom classes to manage text in between text. We also have this image row here. This image row has the margin applied direct to the element. This is OK also. There is no official rule of it has to be applied direct to the element or it has to be nested inside of a spacing wrapper. I'll even show you that we have the exact same section with the spacing wrapper example. So we have margin top, three rem, and again, we have this margin top, three rem. The really nice benefit of this is that I can quickly change it and it goes for this element. Great. Now, this decision of do I put it on the element or do I wrap it in a spacing class is based on the project, it's based on the element that you're working with, and it's based on how you want that to be managed throughout the page and throughout the project. So before, we saw it applied directly to the element, but there are benefits to wrapping this inside of a spacing wrapper. You can see there is no spacing wrapper on the outside of this. We have all of these as custom classes and the spacing is applied to these through the, the custom class. Down here, 
we have this same element and it's also it is going to now be wrapped in this margin top and you see the margin top here that's okay why would you want to do this why would you want to have this global spacing instead of on the custom class maybe you want this to adjust through all responsive levels when i'm using my global spacing here it's going to change by responsive level look at how this goes to 2.5 look at how this goes to 1.5 and look at this how it stays at 1.5 so as i'm using my global spacing my entire site is going to update spacing uniformly across all of the responsive levels so the more that you apply that spacing to the custom class, the more spacing edits you're going to have to make as you go through the responsive levels. So to stay more default, to stay super unified, you can use these, these globals. You may also want to update this globally across the project. Maybe you have more of these elements throughout the project. So if you want to manage that spacing globally throughout the project, it may be better to put that spacing on the element rather than the wrapper. If you want to have the flexibility to change the spacing from this block on this page to this block on the other page, instead of creating that combo class that changes just spacing, you use the global so you can change margin large to margin medium. Now, let's actually look into how this, how this can be used in a real life setting. A lot of this is you're not seeing this visually and let's go and look at this visually this stats number is using css grid to create space all all four of these have css grid so watch what happens when i go to edit the grid and i go and increase the row so we're zoomed in not at the right place here we're zoomed in over here so if i want to increase this i can update all four of these at the same time so let's make this even more extreme. Look, with one style change, I'm updating all four of these elements. Great. Now, if I'm using the spacing classes and I have spacing wrappers in between each one of these, look at this margin bottom, margin small. All of these are now wrapped inside our margins. Margin bottom, margin bottom, margin bottom. Margin bottom, margin bottom, margin bottom. Now, if I wanted to change the space in between these elements, I would have to edit each of these global wrappers. Every single spacing wrapper I'd have to go to and say, I want this to be small. I want this one to be small, this one to be small, and this one to be small. So this is a really simple example of how not using the global spacing wrappers can really help you make these changes very, very quickly. Excellent. So now let's look at another example of where we would not want to use global spacing. Uh, we have this padding around this card and we have this really nice spacing direct on the custom element, the custom class. So watch as I adjust this spacing, I can go and adjust all four items at the same time. So you can see when we have these repeating items using the space, using the global wrappers in between each element would require us to change it for each of the four elements. And you can see in here, we have this, this padding medium. This would require us to go, I want padding large. And I want to change this to padding large. I'd have to go and update each one of these one by one. This is a very time consuming process. So I would not want to use the global spacing system here. We have, uh, and, and just as a general note, we want to avoid the global padding for inside of elements. We're using global padding a lot on outer structures, on sections separating big elements from big elements, uh, big components from big components. We don't want to use global padding to create this space.
to create size. That's not what the padding is for. We want to create this size on the custom class. And now we have a great example of where we would want to use our global system. This is a perfect example. We have text, breaking up text, breaking up a button. So we don't want to create a custom class on our heading. Let's see this change. We don't want classes on our headings if we don't need to. We don't want to have custom classes on our text unless we really need to. And we don't want to have any custom classes on our buttons unless we really need to. So having something like this, spacing, home, wrapper, and doing this, this is going to make your site messy. Space larger. We see this so many times in Webflow builds. Client first will never, never be okay with this because this is a great way to make your site very unmanageable. We want to keep our, ty our typography really clean. We want to keep our buttons really clean. We want to keep our headings really clean. So to do that, we can use these global wrappers to apply our margin bottom, margin medium, and to apply that margin bottom, margin small here. So if we want to adjust this, instead of playing with custom classes and instead of playing with combos, we can go in here and say, I want this to be margin large now. Great. And maybe I want a little bit more space here. I can go margin medium. So this is a prime, prime example of where you would want to use the globals. You want to use them to separate elements that don't need custom classes. If you are creating a custom class just to create this spacing, think about it and, and th consider, should I, be, should I be using global or should I be creating custom here? And we're going to release this. All of this, this explanation here goes in detail about these decisions and a lot deeper into why you would make these decisions. A really good example here, we have this, this testimonial item. You can see we have the padding applied to the card. We, in this instance, we're going to have our this on the custom class here. So I can go and adjust this because this is happening in multiple instances. And if I update one card, I want to make sure all cards are updated. This is also an example of not wrapping inside the globals. So we have this testimonial item. If I want to add more testimonial items, I can just continue adding. And this is going to automatically create space here because I'm doing my spacing with CSS grid. This is really powerful. It's going to make you build a lot faster and not worry about those global spacing wrappers. So you can see we're trying to use the globals to help us build faster. We're not trying to do it to fit it into every single situation. If I want to go and change this, I want to be able to change it for all of my instances instead of going in here and saying, I actually want this to be margin large. Another great example, pricing. We want to be able to update all of our pricing things together. Wrapping these inside the globals would be a mess. If a client says, hey, I want a little bit more space here, you may have to update 30 or 40 different classes of your globals to go and make that happen. That's way too much. But look at this. This is a great example of why we would want our, our global system. We have our margin bottom, margin small. We have our margin bottom, margin large. And if we want to go separate this more, we can go and create that additional space with the global. So this is really preventing us from putting any classes on anything that has to do with this type. Really, really powerful. Uh, and yep, these are all more examples, but we've talked about all of these topics. Uh, and that's, that's really a lot of what we want you to think about in client first. Why am I putting this class on this element? Why am I applying spacing in this way? And that's what this entire this entire build here is is here to talk about. Yeah. Do we have any comments? We're, we're getting a here? few. Yeah, we're getting a few questions here. Let's see if I can pull up 
um, there's a couple that I wanted to address because Jonathan and I think maybe we saw this on Twitter the other day. Um, let's see if we can get this here and we'll cut to where is it? Where's my background? Oh, it's this one. Okay. Um, He's saying, I'm curious about the margin direction plus margin size combo usage. Not sure how you can set a margin size that only impacts the direction of the previous classes. I think this had to do with some of the specificity in the ordering of the classes. Was that what we ran into mm -hmm. when we were looked at that? Can someone explain what's happening here um, and how, because um, Peter's saying Jonathan dropping the strongest case against utility class versus frameworks. Um, so how, how does that um how does that work explain css specificity a little bit and why if you copy certain elements and put them into another project without having all the rest of the css it could create some issues with um the order of those classes with the combo classes not doing the overriding um who wants to take this one i see you heart nodding your head harsh shit. do you want to take that yep yeah i can take this one yep so should I share my screen and show how it works really? Because that will be the best way, I think. Sure, if you'd explain. like to share your screen, that'd be great. Uh, okay, so yeah, I, I will share my screen really quick here. There we go. Uh, okay, here we go. Can you see my screen? Yep. Is everything okay? Nice. So whenever we are working with si uh, our spacing system, when we say CSS specific, uh, specificity matters here, that means order of creation of classes matter here, okay? So it's not related to how you are writing them here. So let's say if I take a div block, I will zoom a little bit so that everything is clear. Uh, there we go. If I take a div block and if I'm applying a spacing class, let's say margin uh, top. And this is again a small tip that we don't really have to type all the thing. We can just type something in short like mar top and it will show me the margin top class uh, once i do that i will apply the size i will go with margin large so here it doesn't matter if you place x large first and then margin top after the recommended way is to place the direction first and the size later because you can just try out different sizes now i can try out a small i can then jump and try out x small as well but let's jump to how it works so uh, to make this system work, it's really important that the direction classes are created after the size classes. If Because a, a class can only overwrite another class if that class is made after the class we are trying to overwrite. I will again not dive theoretically deep. I will try to show a live example here. I have a div block. I will name it div, uh, let's say div number one. That means this div is created first. I will give this a pairing of, let's say, 50 on all the sides. I will again create a div and I will give this a div number two. Now I will change. I will have a pairing of 50 on the top, just like this. Now, if I'm trying to make, let's say you can assume this to be a spacing class. If I'm trying to combine all, all of those, let's see what happens. Okay. So I will take div number one and then I will apply a div number two as a combo class here. So you can see that it's not working. It's not overriding the style. The reason is div number one is created first and div number two is created afterwards. And it's not really having any uh, style here. What we can do is now to make it work, what we need to do is I think it's it was not really clear, uh, so clear. So what we can do is first we need to create the spacing size. Here we go. And then we need to create the direction classes. So I will, for direction class, I will call it div direction to be more clear. I will leave the top one and I will have zero, zero on all other sides. That means when I'm trying to override, I want these three classes to be overridden. And I will leave this top here so that top is top is spacing is taken from the previous class. Okay. I will, I will rename this to this to div. Uh, size. There we go. And now when I'm trying to reuse this class, I will reuse this div size and I will type div direction. Now you can see it's working. It's overriding it. 
the reason is because diff direction is created after the size if size is created after the direction it will not work so this is what what this is what's called order of creation of classes and you can see that right here this is the order of creation of classes in webflow so i created div size first and direction afterwards if i create the direction first the spacing system is not going to work let's say you want to add more classes more spacing classes to your system and that's where our extension comes in handy because we can reorder the classes using our extension and that's how if you are adding new classes we can make it work but anyways we are, we do have some additional classes in our style guide as well so if i go to my style guide if i go to my spacing classes like margins we have three options that says custom 1 custom 2 and custom 3 which means even if you are if if you want a custom class for your own build you can just rename these three classes and use it so uh, is that clear joe or do you want to clarify it even more further yeah i think it's just that important for is... people to... i'm sorry go ahead joe Uh that's clear. We can show we can show this actually not working by incorrectly copy and pasting the system to your project. Yes. So that's That's right. A, a lot of people If you if you clone our yeah, Remmer. No, I was just going to say that that's probably where people will run into problems with this. It's cuz they'll just want to clone one component from something and they won't bring the whole style system is, which is why like what we recommend as best practices is start from a clonable whether it's our clonable or whether you take that same clonable and make it into your own base starting point one of the best things you can do as a web flow developer and any kind of web developer is kind of set some systems up for how you work and like you don't want to have to do this every time you start a project in web flow right like you don't want to have to go into a blank canvas and create all these classes that's why we you know have this clonable in the system for you so clone the whole project before you end up running into the issues that I think Joe's going to um describe and clarify here in the next phase because if you do start copying pasting elements out of order you could end up with problems where that specificity or those styles will not actually do what they're supposed to do because they're organized improperly in that class uh or in, I'm sorry in your styles um panel there just because of the order they were created, right? So the order matters. That's why Joe was talking about using the extension. It's not about sorting the classes by name or alphabetically or sorting them in some other way, right? The order of those classes really does matter um for how the effect takes place on the page. And it's also important to know that this is not an issue specific to client first. This is not something that our system is creating. This is CSS. This is how it works. So through our system, we've now realized that people have to understand this concept as web developers. So let's now get into some of the problems that people were facing by copying these systems. If you use our clonable, it's all set up. We've already identified this, and it. you just clone the project and you don't have to worry about this but if you're adding our spacing system to our if we're if you're adding our spacing system to an existing product i will show you how you should not do it let's go and jump into this i'll share my screen here and first i'm going to show you what not to do and then i'm going to show you what to do and then we can even go through a a different example that doesn't even have to do with spacing that you could just run into any website with any system Okay. So we're on this build that we were looking at before and I'm going to go in to the style guide page and I want to now go and put the spacing system into another project. So I'll go into the classes here and the first thing I'll do is copy the directions. This is wrong. I'm telling you what not to do here and I'm going to show you that it doesn't work if you do it like this. So I will copy the directions and I will paste it into my project. Now I'm going to copy the margins. So now we're copying the sizes, we're copying the small, the medium and the large. And I will do the same thing, paste it into the project. You would think that client first is now ready to be used. You can use these global spacings, but I will show you that it does not work. Let's go and add a brand new div block to the page. we're going to add our margin top 
You can see everything is working as we would expect. We have this availability here on the top waiting for a size to be added. And when I go and apply that size, it's not going to add it to only that side. It's going to add it to all sides because of specificity. That margin large was added afterwards and therefore is more specific to the project. Specificity, more specific. The website is saying this is more clear to us that we should be adding all of these because this was added afterwards. So if you go and do this, the spacing system will not work. Now let's go and undo everything. We'll make sure that Webflow saves this. And now I'm going to copy the margins first. So we're not gonna do the directions first. We're now doing the margins first. And this will be the first thing that gets into our style sheet. I'll give a reload just to make sure that we have a fresh clean slate here of CSS in the project. And when I go to paste in all of the sizes and then paste in the directions, now it's going to work. So if I go down and add a brand new div to the page and I do my margin top like I did last time, we see the same outcome. And now with the combo applied, it works. So you can see that this margin top is now being more specific. It's allowing us to keep these zeros and let only this side come through. So that little tiny change, which styles come into the project first is so, so important. Now I'm going to show you an example of something that has nothing to do with spacing and something that could happen in any project and just absolutely confuse you with what's going on. Okay. So we've removed the spacing. We don't need these anymore. Uh, okay. I have my old example in here. Hold on. We have a background red and we have a display none. Let's make sure that we clear the project here. Okay. So I'm going to add my display none class. And this is going to be display none, right? This is now a global and now I'm under the impression that I can use display none anywhere in my project and I apply it to a class and it will make that element display none, but maybe not. Let's now go and add a background red I'll just give it some size so we can see it. I'm going to apply a background color so we can see it. And I'm going to apply display. So I've now applied a display block to this background color red. Using global classes, understanding how classes work, my first thought is, well, if I apply my display none on top of red, it's going to be display none but that's actually not how it works. If I go display none here, it does not work because of CSS specificity. Because background red was created after this display none, it is more specific to the style sheet, to the project, and it is going to keep this display. Now we will fix this problem with the FinSuite extension. Let's go into the extension. I'm going to go to the organize and CSS styles reorder. We added a big block of text here because we had a lot of people saying, can I do alphabetically? Can I do it by amount of uses in the project? And no, that's not what this is for. This is for issues like this. So let's look what happens when I actually swap the order of when these were created. Now the background red was created first and display none was created next. So I will save this. It's going to reload the project. And when we reload, this display none global is going to work. So let's look at this. We have our background red, we have our display none, and that is exactly the intended outcome. So this is CSS specificity, really, really nuanced. A lot of people don't know it. You don't even need to be a pro in Webflow to, to you don't have to understand this to be a pro in Webflow. But when you do understand things like this, you could start to take your game to the next level. 
So that's a really good example, seeing the spacing in our system and this really simple display none option. Nice. Yeah, great. Any questions think, from that? No, I think um, most folks are definitely feeling like we're clarifying a few things, especially in the context of when you would want to copy and paste versus starting with the clonable. Um, I think the best bet is to you want to create that project, right? Again, whether it's our clonable, you come back and you start from scratch every time, or whether you clone that and you turn it into your own starting point that you like to work with. Every time you start a Webflow project, you should just duplicate that. And the goal with all of these style systems is that as you go, you'll get used to how you create this stuff, right? Just like you're real familiar in Webflow with how to go, where to go, what to click, what to do, et cetera, you'll start learning how to name these things. And between projects, there will be consistency. There will be, it'll be easier for you to just know like, oh, I need to add padding here. That's padding dash whatever, you know? And so this becomes, again, a system that you'll, it'll become indispensable, to be honest. Once you get familiar with it, it, it really does just speed up that workflow and process. So um, yeah, any any thoughts on that, um, Rohan, Harshit? Yeah, I would like to, I would like to uh, answer one question that was asked before the tutorial that Joe just uh, shown us. So it was asked by, I, I believe, Pablo Cortez. So he was asking that when we are having globals, do we base them on our Figma file or do we base our Figma file based on our globals? Okay. So I would like to answer that thing. So yeah, there we go. So our actually globals are something to start with that will help you scale your website, okay? When you are having a Figma file you want to convert into a Webflow project, you will, you will, you may have to edit some values in the existing globals and you might have to create your own globals. But it's not like uh, you have a Figma file, then you are creating all the globals from scratch. It's not like that. You clone your project, make, ed uh, make edits in the values values of the sizings, the spacings based on your Figma file and maybe create your own global when needed. So this is how we say this. Uh, I hope this answered the question. It's, nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. And also a great thing to know is in two weeks, the FinSuite extension is going to have a safe copy paste method of just the spacing system. We absolutely recommend starting a new project from the official clonable, but maybe you're jumping into an existing project or you want to revisit something you built in the past and you're not going to just clone and migrate everything over. You need to start from that base, from the your old project. Inside the extension, we'll have some shortcuts for client first. And one of those shortcuts is to safely copy and paste the entire spacing system into an existing project. So it's still important that you understand what we just went over, but we are going to have a resource for that quick copy and paste. So you never have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, great. Okay. So let's see, we've got about 15 ish minutes here left on the stream. Um, I know some folks wanted to do some like start from scratch type tough type type stuff type stuff or maybe dive through the wireframe. So let us know in the comments what you'd like us to do at this point. Should we jump in and maybe do some of that blank canvas stuff and build from there? Harshit, maybe you can walk us through a little bit of that. Um, does somebody have a specific question about something they're working on that they'd like us to answer? Um, so we'll give that a second for those comments to come in. The other thing I wanna mention at this point is that um, Webflow has a live stream coming up this afternoon. I think it's in about an hour, just over an hour from now. After that conversation, we've booked out the gather space, the clone cop gather space. And so we're gonna have a community chat. So if you'd like to continue just a community chat and get involved with what we're doing um, beyond just these streams, feel free to join us for that. Um, we'll share the link here in the comments. The other thing is uh, go ahead and like this video. 
smash that like button. Um, <laughs> I everyone that's commenting is subscribed because we we uh, required a subscription to comment mm -hmm. today. But also go ahead and subscribe if you're not. If you're just back there watching, uh, we're live on Tuesdays and Thursdays with this kind of comp uh, content. So um, yeah, let's see what's coming in, and we'll. Let's see, jump in a blank canvas is what they're saying. Wireframes, okay, start from scratch. Um, cool, I, uh, yeah. Let's do a quick run through from scratch, just setting up the page structure. Harshit, do you wanna do that? Can you share your screen opening up from, uh, even just cloning the project? Like let's literally start cloning the clonable and just Let's start from there and let's just create the page structure. We don't necessarily need to go into creating content or elements, but let's help people understand how to set up some basic structure. And then what we can do is we'll open up some of the wireframes and we can go in from where our shit leaves us into jumping into some of the wireframes that have a little bit more of that uh, structure built out. So our shit, while you're um, showing that first uh, kind of page setup, I'll open up a couple of these wireframes in another browser and we'll walk through that whole process. Nice, nice. Uh, I, I will try to show here the very basic structure of the page uh, up to sections. And I will try to make a section like a hero section for you all. OK, so I, uh, let me share my screen really quick. There we go. Is everything fine? Yep. With the screen. Nice. So whenever we clone our project, we will start from here. So we have the home page blank so that you can start right away. You don't have to uh, worry about uh, deleting pages and all those. Just to start from the home page. Yeah. So I will just, uh, like Rema said, I will just go and create a new project. Uh, okay. It's taking a little bit of time. Let's reload this. Okay, while Harshit's doing yeah, that do and loading that up in the background, yeah, go ahead and um, yeah. just just get that all set up. I'm gonna remind people where they can go to get all these resources. So if you go to finsuite.com forward slash client first, that's where you can get all of this. And right up there, if you click that little clonable button, it'll take you to the page on the Webflow site. You can open that to inspect it. If you just click clone project, you know, live test here, and we clone that, you will get kind of a new install here. And some people have been saying that, you know, like, hey, it's a blank page. Well, it's kind of on purpose that it's a blank page as you start, because what Harshit was gonna show you is kind of already structured. Um, actually, what's this margin top? Okay, that shouldn't be there. Um, Okay, so Harshit, did you get your end set up by chance? So this is where, this is where all the magic happens. It's a blank page. For a reason if you look here in your pages then you can see the style guide style guide and then if you look in your styles here you will see that all of the styles are here in the proper order to start doing the work so that if i'm on my home page and i'm in my page wrapper in my main wrapper and i wanted to drop a div inside of here and you know uh call that whatever or apply a specific style let's say i wanted to add some margin to that, I have all of my margin options available to me already in this project. So let's jump over to Harshit and um, looks like he's got his project set up for us to take a look at. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So whenever we clone project, uh, I will start from here. So I'm just selecting the template. This is how it appears when we clone a project and I will just create a new project just like this. And we will first land on the home page and we will have our very basic setup here, the structure, the structure classes. So we have the page wrapper and we have the global styles that is having some really utility helpful classes that we can use throughout our projects. And then we have the main wrapper. So our nav bar is going to stay outside our main wrapper. This is how th that's the right structure based on accessibility. So to get a good accessibility, we are going to place nav bar outside our main wrapper. Now inside main wrapper, I will try to build a hero section. So first I will take a div block and it's really important that we are giving them proper tags. It's not just like we are uh, having a div block and we start building things. We also need to make sure we are giving them proper tags. So main is having a main tag here. I will go to the div block and because this is going to be my section header, I will go ahead and give this a tag of header so that 
it's accessible now i will name this uh name this header i will give it a class of section home hero okay if it's a universal class we can name it section hero but here i'm going to name it section home hero that means this section is hero section of home page now i will go ahead and take a class that is page padding so this is how we will structure things in client first we have page padding now i will take a container class inside the page padding so i will let's say take container large like this now there are two options for the padding section hero section is something that might need some kind of custom padding based on the projects so again like joe said we have to do make decisions based on the strategies we have so generally for hero sections i personally recommend that you have a custom padding there and not use the global one the reason is because we have navbar in the top and the content because of the content that goes in hero section in most of the projects we might need we actually need custom padding here that's why but here i will just go ahead and take a global one i will go ahead and do padding huge let's go with padding huge and then sorry i will first apply the direction so let's go with padding vertical and then i will apply padding x huge here so here we have our basic setup ready and then i will make a component i can call it hero component if if it's a component that is going to be used in other pages as well or i can call, call it home hero component so home hero component like this and then i can give it a custom style i can make this a css grid if i want to just like this and let's make a very basic setup here and this is also a really nice trick because everything by default is in pixels but we want this thing to be in rem so what we can do is we can just type the number and divide that by 16 to make it rems just like this so it's a fast way to actually make this work here we go and let's take a div block to the left side now i i am going to place my content inside here it's going to be h1 and i am going to place a paragraph here nice how do we space this properly okay and how do we name this div block what we can do is here i can call it home hero underscore content so it's clear now this content is part of our home hero component now to make a spacing here i can take a margin top class so i'm as you can see i'm not typing the full class name i'm just typing my top i selected this and now i will select the size i will go with margin small there we go and i will place this paragraph inside this margin top class so here we have something very basic now let's add a image here i will take another div block i will call it home hero underscore image wrapper now i can have a image here and i have just uploaded a very basic image that we can use here so uh, let's use this for now there we go and i can call this one a home hero image now i can apply the styles to it let's say i want 100% i can do that i can center this thing because this is a custom class i can apply styles directly to it so this is how our basic setup looks like for the hero section and when we are creating more sections what we can do is we can just start from here so let's say we have another section that is clients so it will be like section clients something like this and if it's specific to home page then it will be section home client and not clients okay something like this so yeah nice okay and, so yeah. oh, one ahead. more thing yep. one more thing to keep in mind yeah so after we are done creating the sections we we need to have a footer in our website as well right again very important that we place the foot footer outside our main wrapper it it is not going inside our main wrapper again because we want a very accessible structure this is the recommended way that we place the footer outside our main wrapper to make it more accessible and then we can name of course we don't want to use the default webflow footer we have to create our own that is that can be called as footer footer underscore component it's like this so yeah this is how the basic page setups work it's really easy 
uh, I, I will also show alternative way of this padding here. So let's say we don't want a padding vertical because our project is something that really having a uh, custom custom spacing on our hero section. So what I can do is I can just remove this padding vertical from here and I can apply padding to my class section home hero directly here based on my project. Let's say I have a top padding of four ramps and I have a bottom padding of two ramps. So this is a, this is something where we don't want to stack up classes. I don't want to stack two or three classes to make this work better. I applied the style directly to my class. Yeah. So these are the decisions that you can make based on your projects. And yeah, this is how the simple setup looks like of a page. Nice. Okay, great. Thank Thanks for shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, appreciate yeah, you pleasure. giving us that uh, little deep dive there behind the scenes into the client first uh, kind of structure and setup. Hopefully that helps some of y'all uh, clarify from a, uh, you know, a zero starting point. Um, and again, this isn't like, this isn't one of those things where, you know, everything's super rigid. There are some core ideas here about how to structure these global padding styles you know, and, and some of these global systems, right? We're not trying to just, you're not trying to like apply this across the board to everything. You're not trying to have a, a, a dedicated pre-built class for everything you want to build here, right? What you want to do is just for this, the core components, the, the exterior boxes that help shape the content and hold those inside of your pages, right? Like the structure, if you will, of the containers, you know, if you understand, you know, the Webflow is all about the box model. And so those outer boxes, the boxes that hold those shapes or that give the structure to your website, that's really where you apply a lot of this. And then as you go in, as you go into these components, as you go into the, the guts of the site, then you start creating the custom classes that are clearly named to help, you know, really organize some of this. So um, did I get anything that wrong? Joe, I see some questions coming in. Rohan, what do you, what do you see in here as you're, as you're hearing this, what are, what are we wrapping up with? We got about five ish minutes before um, you know we officially wrap up here. But what what are we seeing in the comments? What um, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think this was a great tutorial, and we need more of these. Uh, perhaps we can have like a design that is built up in Figma, and then we are building that live on on YouTube. So, I guess people would really appreciate that. Yeah, I agree. I think the live tutorial stuff, the other stuff is um, this could be good. We're going to do a we're going to start hosting like some open mic, like Webflow open mic type things, live support, kind of like mini versions of the open house, but occurring regularly. And part of that is going to be education. So maybe we can talk, um, you know, Harshit and some of the other folks from the client first team um, just to be in there helping and, and we can be building kind of in real time, uh, hands on. That's why when it, that's why we want to get to that next step of, of this here. So it's like the stream is good to kind of go over the high level stuff, um, but sometimes that nitty gritty stuff is better hands on. So maybe that's a, a better approach. Let's, let's see, Pablo Cortez is saying, let's do a Figma to Webflow. <laughs> nice, okay. Using client first challenge. That could be fun. Um, Joe, if we did like some shared Figma design, people got to build it in client first um maybe we're all building together that, that could be interesting and then we grade the sites at the end <laughs> and give people feedback yeah what's um Blind that, first clone comp <laughs> yeah um that was a good question i think to address joe do you want to address jonathan's questions about uh the rich text that you're just answering there sure 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 okay I was about to write more about it, so I'll, I'll just uh, talk about it verbally. Okay, Jonathan asks, how do you recommend dealing with rich text spacing? Definitely major advantages to using spacing classes and nesting for designed elements, but should be, default be set for rich text? What I like to do with rich text is give the rich text a class. And on that class, you can apply specific styles to to the elements within that rich text. So go through H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all, everything that you are potentially going to use inside that rich text block and apply some default margin bottoms. So maybe the H2 has three rem margin bottom. The, H, the H3 has two rem margin bottom. 
The H4 has two rem margin bottom. And just define those. Try to stick with those. Try not to have a bunch of combo classes on your margins. Try not to, to, to have all these variations. You want the less amount of variations as possible. And you can pull those margin bottom values from your spacing classes. So if your margin large is four rem, maybe that should be the official margin bottom of the H2, for example. You can play around with it, but that's how we like to deal with it. Unfortunately, we just don't get a lot of flexibility with that rich text spacing. So that's not the perfect answer, but that is how we deal with it from the start. Nice. Okay, that sparked any other questions or thoughts? Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's confirmation there. Figma to client first would be, um, yeah, great. Even if the design had lots of broken grids and stuff, even more if the design had, yeah, that's, that's the, um, well, and that's where you get into those components. You know, you, you may be thinking about some of those asymmetrical designs or things that, you know, you may be seeing client first and thinking of it as like a real rigid kind of box system that, you know, is only works in certain ways, but that's where you get into those components where you can, you know, do custom styles and you shouldn't be afraid to, you know, to add styles to an element or to create custom elements inside of this to create some of those funky looks. Um, Actually, we have some ideas for how we're going to do some experiments internally to show everyone the diversity of this project by, um, you know, doing like a kind of a build event where we all build from the same element without adding or removing classes, just using the client first structure and showing the versatility of the design functionality and, and how you can really get creative with the design inside of client first. And so we are thinking about other ways that we can um, help with education here and just create content that, you know, gets people uh, up to speed on, on some of these tools. Uh, okay. the solution I've been using. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't a better global way. Great. Um, and one of the best ways to learn on YouTube is to watch someone do a live build and talk about it as they go. Yeah. Okay. So we could do some of that. Um, let's see the question about RTE rich uh, comes a lot. Maybe show how to nest the classes. Hmm. Does anybody uh, have a idea here? Can help Pablo. Hmm. I don't I'm think not sure what he means by I RTE. don't think that's possible. Yeah. Rich text element. Ah, okay. Uh, but you can there is no nesting of classes in the rich text element, unfortunately. Yeah. We do have some sweet text stuff that you can do. You can customize some things inside of the rich text, but I don't know that that's the same of what we're talking about here. Um, that's yeah. just kind of like some adding some embellishments to your to your rich text. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, client first makes the life easy, the Webflow dev life easy for sure. Um, all right, well, I think that's uh, enough for today. There's a lot of live streaming happening today. Um, again, in an hour, uh, Webflow will be hosting their live event, and then we're gonna be inside of this gather space. So we're gonna jump into the clone comp gather. If anybody's hanging out here during the live stream, um, we're not gonna be in here uh, just because most people will be focused on watching the stream rather than kind of like hanging out with us inside of a space. But after the stream, we will be inside of the clone comp space here. So y'all can jump in and, um, you know, we'll talk about whatever Webflow announces, whatever they discuss during the stream. We'll share that link here. Um, and we'll just have a community conversation about what's going on in the world of Webflow, the future of Webflow. Um, it'll be just a wide open public chat that we hope to see some of y'all attending. Um, and I think that's it. Joe, any other thoughts for the folks before we head out of here? Uh-oh, did we lose Joe? What's up with the trend of losing? We, we, we've been losing Joe like in the last couple minutes of the stream, like the last three weeks. It's been like a trend. Literally on the sign out, <laughs> we dropped Joe. Um, there is some some serious weather. Uh, there's like a, a, 
a hurricane headed for the Yucatan Peninsula right now. So uh, he warned me at the beginning that there may be some issues. But okay, we made it to the end. So all good there. Uh, let's see, just got a message from him. Power went out as I asked the question. So yeah, just as we thought, power went out in Mexico there. Hopefully everything will be okay with that storm coming in. Uh, we will see you all in uh, just a little bit. We'll be in the Webflow chat. Be sure to join that. Go to the Webflow YouTube channel um, for the link to that. And then we'll do our chat afterwards. Harshit, Rohan, any final thoughts as we sign out? I'm really excited to see uh, what the yeah, I have a, thing is going to be about. Yep, yeah, please go ahead. Sorry, Rohan, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I was saying I'm really excited about the Webflow live stream. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be the first time Vlad's back. Well, they did. They did. Oh, Joe's back. Um, they did a um, a stream in Q1. But uh, yeah, this is the first time Nelson's back. I'm interested mm -hmm. to see what they do format wise, uh, what kind of special tricks they have up their sleeve. I know Nelson's super excited about this upcoming stream. So yeah, it'd be cool to see. Um, Harshit, what were you going to say there? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, I recommend uh, everyone to, if they are trying to learn client first, then start with some basic Figma files and then try to convert it. And and I am confident that it's so simple. You will be able to uh, master client first within one, within two or three projects. I would say you will be able to have a really good idea and make a few into structure. Yeah, heard that. Okay, so I just dropped the link uh, to this stream here, and I'll do this one more time too. I'm gonna pin this gather link. That's gonna be a fun hangout. Uh, we always have a good time in gather. We've got the space reserved, I think for like 75 folks. So hopefully we don't hit any uh, thresholds there. I see some people are already jumping in. Uh, what's up, Noble? Somebody jumped into the map here, so hello, hello. And let's take a look real quick before we go at this poll here. So, oh, where to go? Let's look at the chat. Let's look at this poll. Yeah, I miss critique, 17%. I like the new content, 79%. I prefer meeting and gather, 5%. So um, there you go. We'll keep experimenting with the content. We'll keep working on hands-on stuff, different things we can do to kind of keep these uh, Thursday streams engaging. And I think that's the format we'll evolve to, Joe. It's like uh, Tuesday will be the growth stream. Thursdays will be more hands-on. Uh, interactive, you know, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, we'll leave it at that. It's been great hanging with y'all one more time. Join us again a little bit later today. Adios. Any final thoughts, Joe? I know. I, I'm sorry. Let me let me give <laughs> your power shut off. Do you want to you want to give a send out here? Or not? Okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I think he was muted. We can't hear you, Joe. You're muted. All right. Well, we'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>